Okay, factoring trinomials. I thought it would be fun tonight to factor trinomials. So um, I'm going to go through a kind of one, two, three, four, five different ways that this might happen. Some important stuff here. Let's take this. This is the standard form of a quadratic equation. Let's take just some really simple stuff uh, first. If, in the case of, let's, let's start with the first one. Let's just say... Um, in this case, B and C are positive. Are positive here, yeah? B and C. So let's just look at it for a second. B. That's this B. B. That's this B. And let me say C. C. That's this C. And C, that's this C. All right, so going back to that, let's uh, start with an equation like this one. Let's um, let's factor this. So let's start by let's factor x squared plus six x plus eight. In the book, they're not setting equal to zero, but you know what? Let's just get in a good habit and just always set this thing equal to zero. Or if yeah, let's just set that equal to zero, if you don't mind. <clears throat> First off, let's see if we can make a list of these parts here. This is a right here. So what is the value of a here? Because this is there's a lot of confusion about this. And then what's the value of b? And lastly, what's the value of c? Because there are, people seem to hear really weird stuff. Like in this case, I would he I've heard a lot of students say, "Well, the value of a here is x or x squared." <clears throat> I said, "No, because the value of x squared is in front." I'm sorry, the value of a is in front of x squared. And then I'll have students say, "Well, isn't it zero then?" And if, well, if that was true, we'd have zero times whatever this was, and that would just go away, wouldn't it? So we know that the a value can't be zero. As a matter of fact, if the a value was zero, you'd have a line. So what is that value? And what I need to tell you guys is that if, if you can't find one, then if you can't see one, then you assume that there's a 1 there because, look, 1 times x squared is x squared, isn't there? So the value of a here is 1, and that is going to be really important later because this rule that we're going to use tonight doesn't hold up when a is not 1. So it's really important that we keep in mind that, for now, a is 1. The value of b, b is the number that's in front of the, sing the single x, x to the first power, and that value is 6. And then, of course, the value of C, because there is a number here, the value of C is 8. So now what we're going to do is we're going to play a little game, and we're going to realize that, first off, if A is 1, then we can start by kind of assuming that this is true here. And then the weirdest thing happens. What you're going to find is, what, what we was going to say is we're going to say plus <coughs> M here and plus N over here, and then we're going to say this, we're going to come up with this idea that this is true, that m plus n, m plus n is going to be equal, is going to be equal to b. And the same m times, instead of plus, but times the same n is going to be equal to to C. <clears throat> so what we're supposed to figure out here is what two numbers add to 6 and multiply to 8. So maybe you can maybe this would be easy for you. If not, you could do this. You could say, okay, let's take the factors of 8 and you could say, okay, well, the factors of 8 are 1 times 8, but of course 1 plus 8 is not 6. 2 times 4, and I think we have it. 2 times 4 is equal to this 8. 2 plus 4, 2 plus 4 is equal to 6. So we have our answer here, and our answer is x plus 2 times x plus 4. And we can <clears throat> refoil this, and we can prove that this is true. X times X is X squared. X times 4 is 4X. 
2 times x is 2 more x, and 2 times 4 is positive 8. So there we have it, don't we? So this is one way to look at this. Okay, let's move on, <clears throat> please. Um, let's look at this. We have time, so let's, while well, we do have time, let's keep going. The other possibility is this. What if b is negative, is negative, and c is positive? Let's see what possibilities that gives us, remembering that we're, we're assuming that right now that, that a is 1. So in this case, it is 1. We have x squared minus 10x plus 16. So keep trying to reiterate to anybody who will listen to me that this is just a little game that we're playing. We have the value of a here is 1, so we're going to say here we're going to get an x, and here we're going to get an x. <clears throat> we want two numbers. When we multiply them, we get a positive number. So what most people say, well, if that's true, then we're going to get a positive here and a positive here. Well, that's going to work great, except for a positive plus a positive is not going to be a negative, is it? So what's the other two things that we could multiply together? What are the other two signs we can multiply together to get a positive? So I'm looking to get a positive. So before you put numbers here, I'm going to multiply two numbers. I could put a positive times a positive, but that won't help me when I add them. So it's going to be a negative and a negative, right? Okay, so now how about the factors of 16 that add up that add up to 10? And look at this for a second. What if we did this? Right, we have 1 and 16. That's not going to work. 2 and 8. That's looking like a winner, isn't it? Because negative 2 plus negative 8 is negative 10, right? So we're going to get a 2 here and an 8 there. And again, I'm going to check this math out to make sure that it works. You know what, I'm going to make sure I keep setting everything to zero. It's good practice, isn't it? So here we have it. Try x times x is x squared. x times negative 8 is negative, right? This is me. You know, let me just diagram this really quickly. We have a minute. Let me diagram this for you. I'm going to do x times x, aren't I? I'm going to do x times negative 8. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to do negative 2 times x. And what I'm diagramming, of course, right now is FOIL, isn't it? So let's just follow the lines, if you don't mind, and we'll do follow the blue line, x, whoops, let's follow the, bur the mauve, purple, whatever, magenta line, uh, arrow, and it goes x times x, and that, of course, is x squared. Then we'll follow the blue line. I'm distributing everything here to everything inside here. So x to negative 8 is negative 8x, negative 8x. Negative 8x. And then I'm going to do this piece here. Negative 2 times negative x is negative 2x, isn't it? Then lastly, a negative times a negative is a positive. And 2 times 8 is 16. I sim simplify. Remember, when we simplify here, this is a really common error. This is x squared. So x squareds and x's don't add, you can't add them. But this is an x to the, these are x to the first power, and this is x to the first power. We have negative 8 of those, sorry, but we have negative 8 of those x to the first powers here, and we have negative 2 of those x to the first powers here, so we can add them together. So we get our x squared, add these two pieces together, get negative 10x plus 16 ones here, isn't it? Plus 16, so we went back and we proved that this worked. So this refoiling, I'm sorry, foiling is proof that this worked. So these, and again, this is super important. We have about 50 seconds left. These are the factors, not the solutions. Totally different ideas. Um, one is a continuation of the other, but they're not the same thing. Please, please, please. It's not a mistake that we really want to be making here. So, so going back here, I want to remember that these are factors, right? Factors, I got 20 seconds left. These are factors. Factors, right? Factors. Okay, good work. Really happy with you. Make sure you're taking good notes and practice, practice, practice.